Go ahead and get your attention. Welcome Saluki Nation, those are here, man. Great to see such a really good crowd piling here to Banterra as you always do throughout the year here in the Charles Helene Pavilion. Welcome to those as well, Saluki Nation. Oh, many are watching online as well for what is gonna be a really exciting day as we introduce the next chapter for Saluki basketball. I was joking with Tim in the back because when I first, when I was interviewing for the position I'm in a year ago, I was always told about how Tim's a big basketball nut. Now, I'm not surprised that today, of all days, we have this because it is Walt Frazier's birthday. So I thought that was pretty good timing to have that to welcome our new head coach. And of course, ironically, as we obviously introduce you to our new head coach, his first win at his previous stop was in this building too. So that was his first ever win at Wright State. But now you're going to be happy for those wins that Coach Nagy will have when we introduce him. Obviously, before we really get going for our ceremony tonight, we have a lot of special people that are here today. I want to recognize a few of them. Uh, our league had an outstanding year this year, and the reason our league continues to trend in the right direction is because of our commissioner. Jeff Jackson is here. Jeff, if you can wave right over there. Our president, Dr. Dan Mahoney is here as well. President Mahoney, wherever you are at, way. There we go, right here, yeah, front row. You think I'd be used to doing these? Just, just point to the first seat. Of course, just continue, just a lot of special people here as well. Then our, our last one we want to recognize is one of our members of the Board of Trustees, Phil Gilbert, is here as well. Once again, on behalf of Southern Illinois University and Saluki Athletics, it's an honor to welcome you again to this special event for our new chapter in Saluki basketball. I am your host, Luke Martin, the voice of the Salukis. But my introduction is the least important. It's now time to welcome to the stage our chancellor here in Carbondale, Mr. Austin, Dr. Austin Lane. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you, Saluki Nation. It's good to be with you. Um, I tell you what, uh, this is a beautiful scene. Uh, and a very important scene before the Easter weekend. I'm so glad we're able to be at this point. I'll be very brief. Uh, before I give some accolades to Tim, I want to thank Saluki Nation uh, for your passion and for your patience over the last three weeks. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Passion and patience. Thank you so much. But we had to get it right. And no pun intended, but we had to get it right. I keep We're getting right state all this accolades here, but we got it right with this guy. Uh, I talked to Tim and Dr. Mahoney and Matt uh, Kupek, and I, I've talked to them more than I've talked to my own wife over the last three weeks. And so uh, this was a very important decision for us. Um, you know what, when we hired Tim almost two years ago now, Tim, it's been almost two years, uh, when Matt Kupek and I were in Atlanta and we were in that conference room, as soon as he walked in, we said, that's our guy, right? We knew it. Tim was fired up. Uh, Tim was excited about being a Saluki. He understood the history and the importance of this institution as related to athletics. And the biggest thing about Tim is that this guy doesn't flinch. And, and he got tested a little bit over the last three weeks, and he didn't flinch. This guy is solid. Uh, very passionate about what he brings and believes. And, and we got a coach that checks all the boxes. So if you can give Tim a big round of applause for doing a great job and getting our coach here. Now the real boss is Jamie. Uh, yep, Jamie. Just like it was Monica, right? When we got Tim on board, it was Jamie. And uh, I know we were meeting the other day. Uh, how she talked about her husband in terms of his integrity and his character and, and his, his historic uh, uh, run as a head coach. Uh, it was just really beautiful to see that support for him. But we heard that from a number of people across the country. And, and by the way, we had several coaches and agents uh, who basically bugged us every single day about wanting to become our next head coach. So as you can imagine, uh, to, to be here in this seat and naming the coach today, uh, you know, he, he jumped over a lot of people who are very interested, and there's a reason for that. So with that note, Scott, I want to welcome you to Saluki Nation. Uh, I know you're going to do a great job. You, you've got a historic record there. You've done great jobs at all of your stops, and I know you're going to do that here, here in Saluki Nation and, and make us all proud. Uh, Tim's going to come up and, and talk a little bit about 
uh, Scott and, and some background here, but I'm going to kick it to Tim. But uh, again, we, we've got a great coach that's here. He's going to do a great job and go dogs. Thank you. I'm tired. I'm not going to lie. I'm tired. My eyes feel glassed over and uh, a little puffy. I'm sure I don't look too great right now, but it's been an intense three weeks. Um, but when you're an athletics director, right, these are the moments that um, you better be ready for and you better be prepared for and you better enjoy because you don't get many opportunities like this. At least you hope you don't get many opportunities like this during your career. And um, it's, it's been a... a a good process. I, I was very happy. So first thing I got to do before we get going is I got to thank Chancellor Lane. I got to thank President Mahoney. I got to thank uh, Judge Gilbert. Um, without their support, none of this is happening. Um, they all were extremely instrumental in this process and making it happen. I also got to thank Matt Kupek. Matt um, and I became really, really close over these last couple of weeks, and he was my rah-rah uh, coach, uh, kept me going. Uh, Matt, I'm indebted. And uh, Todd Reeser, uh, my deputy AD, was kind of my rock uh, through all this and, and somebody I could talk to. And, of course, Kathy and Katie and the whole staff really kind of put up with a, a lot of stuff for me over the last couple of weeks. Um, when we started this process, um, this was something that we'd been, I had been preparing for, obviously, as an athletic director, you do this every fall, right? In, in September, you start putting together this list. It's kind of like playing uh, whatever that draft kings or whatever, and you kind of play around with your board. You're like, wow, if I was hiring a coach, look at here are the guys I'd go after. And uh, it, it was kind of like that. And, and so as we started uh, talking about some things and decision points and where we wanted to go, I really uh, made sure we did a lot of research to find what it is that we were going to be looking for. So when that moment hit, we were ready. And the one thing that, uh, as I talked with uh, folks, that we said, look, we have got to get back to, to playing on Sunday in St. Louis. It had been since 2006, <laughs> yes. And we've got to start getting back to the, the tournament. We have got to be relevant again in the Missouri Valley. I love, as Chancellor Lane mentioned when I took this job, I love the tradition. I love the history about SIU. That's, that's what makes this place special. But I want to like live in some history, not just read about the history, right? So I, as I laid out the kind of the things that we were talking about, we said, look, I think for us to get back to where we need to be, it's a risk. Whenever you hire a coach, it's a risk. You don't know if it's going to translate it from one university to the next. But I said, we've got to get somebody who's been a head coach, who's had uh, won league championships multiple times, has been to the NCAA tournament, uh, has proven that they can win so that they have a system, they know how to do it. Well, guess what? There's not a lot of those guys out there, right? And the ones that are out there, a lot, everybody else wants them, too. It's not like a secret, like I just came up with this magic formula. Guess what? Everybody's got that same idea. And it's hard to find somebody that meets that criteria. And oh, by the way, every other school out there that's looking for a coach is talking to those same guys. So what I, I always tell people in this, this isn't a hiring process. This is a search. So I'm searching for our coach. I'm searching for that person who has had multiple conference championships, has been to the NCAA multiple times, right, who's been there. And then you have to kind of start looking at, well, who would appreciate a rural environment, right? Some people, they're not going to enjoy Carbondale. So you got to look for that. Who, who has experience and, and isn't, that, that likes living in a rural area? So you got to start, it really narrows down that pool. And as we started talking with coaches, doing things, I mean, it's, you're, you're juggling because the guys, the coaches that I'm talking to, they're still playing. And other people are trying to court them. So it's this, this dance about who can you get in first and what's the timing, what's the window, and then you throw in agents and that's a whole nother story. So a lot of twists and turns. 
And uh, I think it was last weekend, I'm looking at these two coaches and I'm calling uh, Scott over here to, to get some background info on these two guys. And the whole time I'm talking to him, I'm like, wait a minute. I did all of this research, had all these coaches. I'm like, why am I not talking to this guy? So it's a long story, but we go back and, and um, I, I get to talking to, to Chancellor Lane, um, to, to President Mahoney, a couple of the trustees. And so we, we changed directions a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm talking with the guy that I became friends with, who, who is in fact an agent, and Scott's name came up, and I said, well, who represents Scott? He says, I do. And I'm like, you're just now telling me this? We could have had this search done a lot earlier, but, but that was the beauty of the process, right? And the one thing that I think was great about all this is I think it really strengthened our resolve, right? That got us all on the same page that said, look, basketball, is extremely important to this university. It's extremely important to the people of Southern Illinois. And we have to get this right, and we gotta get somebody in here who knows how to win and can help us get back to where we want to be. And so with that came a very quick courtship. Uh, as soon as I could get on the phone with Scott again and said, hey Scott, you know, I was talking to you about those other guys. I'm not interested in those other guys. I'm interested in you. And uh, man, am I glad it worked out. Uh, I've had a, several sleepless nights this week hoping it would work out. And I am thrilled because, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna rattle off a couple of stats. So as we know, um, or you, maybe you don't know, um, Coach Nagy is gonna be the 15th men's basketball coach in SIU history. He has 577 career wins which makes him the 18th winningest coach that's active right now in Division I. Yeah. He's been to five different NCAA tournaments with two different teams. And keep in mind that doesn't count uh, when he was a Division II coach who went to division, uh, the NCAA tournament eight out of his nine years as a Division II coach. Um, Let's see, where, would I, where else did I want to have? We have three NCAAs at South Dakota State, two NCAAs at Wright State, a total of three NIT tournaments, did I get that right? Three-time Horizon League Coach of the Year. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a lot of winning, and that's exactly what we were looking for. And I could not be more thrilled that this is where the search led us, this is how the process went, and I feel like we have a united front to get back to playing on Sundays in St. Louis and beyond. So with that, oh, and I didn't even mention that he had a couple of uh, NBA players along the way. I should have mentioned that, uh, that he coached. So obviously the guy can recruit too. Had several Player of the Year uh, recipients along the way. So enough of me. I want to introduce to you the man that I am extremely excited about, that's gonna wear maroon and white, and hopefully uh, get us into Sunday in St. Louis and beyond. So with that, please welcome Coach Scott Nagy.
Wow, thank you. Thank you very much, Chancellor and President and Commissioner. Thank you for being here. Uh, it's been it's it's been a crazy three days for for Jamie and me, and and we're just so thrilled to join a, a university and an athletic department with such rich, rich history. And uh, I, I know I'm following a coach that's, that's very beloved for a lot of reasons, as a, as a coach and a man and a player. And uh, you know I hope that I hope that we can uh, earn your admiration and love like he did. Uh, we're we're going to work hard for you. I'm a man of few words. Uh, I think you'll see that. Uh, but but high expectations of, of myself and my players. Uh, and and we knew Jamie and I knew that in order for us to leave. Uh, Wright State and leave Dayton. It was going to take a, a very special place. Uh, our, our, all of our family lives there. Our grandkids live there, and it was going to be hard to pull us away from that. And it, it's it's been an emotional three days, uh, and it's hard. But that doesn't mean it's not good. And I know that because I've had to do it before. And we're just so grateful to be here and grateful to be a part of Saluki Nation. And uh, can't wait to get started. Nervous, but a good nervous. And and uh, you know, got to get a staff hired. A lot of recruiting to do, and uh, Tim read off all those stats. Uh, I have good stats because we've had good players and I've had great staffs, and I'm just so very thankful to those people too. And uh, I would also like to say, Jane Rader and Dr. Bardo, thank you for being here too, two longtime friends, and so excited to get to get to be with you again. So uh, let's get going here. I don't know if I'm coming over here right now. Okay, this this will be even better. I'll talk more over here. <laughs> Or ho hopefully, hopefully can get in the talk with some good questions. We're just catching up with Coach Negi earlier today. Uh, Coach, I you know many of these people will tell you welcome. And as Tim was just telling you about, you know, worked previously at another institution within this league. And anytime you walk through here and you walk through these halls, you can see all the graphics, all the walls. There aren't a lot of places as you go from your locker room, as you will, to the court for every game, where you can just feel the history of the venue. Of course, 15th head coach. You talked a lot about the history. You know it because you've been coaching for a long time, since 1995. Whether you look at all the great names, Coach Heron, Coach Hartman, Bruce Weber, Matt Painter, what's it mean to be in that line and be in that company of just such great history of coaches who have been able to sit in your spot? Well, it's an honor. Uh, one, you know, Jamie and I are both from Illinois. I grew up in Champaign. And I played in the holiday tournament here in high school. And uh, yeah, I believe, I'm pretty sure our senior year, we played Carbondale High School in a championship game. And they beat us. They had an excellent team. My wife is from Decatur and went to the University of Illinois. And I got my master's at the University of Illinois. That's where we met. Uh, but my dad was Lou Henson's assistant at Illinois for uh, 18 or 19 years. And, Obviously, my family has a rich history in Illinois basketball. I know a lot of people in Illinois. Had so many people reach out to me from camps and uh, all the coaches, and they're they're very excited. But uh, all the coaches that that m many of them that you mentioned, I knew about, or my dad knew, or I know. And you know, to get to follow them and get to be mentioned, obviously, in, in the same breath with those guys, is very honoring to me. And so, thank you. You talked about your background, and Tim mentioned the numbers, but. You were a Division II player. You coached at Division II. You took South Dakota State from Division II to Division I. Through all those processes, it's always a cliche of the chip on your shoulder. When you come from that level, you work your way up to Division I. But from all of those days, what do you still hold on to the most from those Division II days that you've been able to build programs, which has been consistent under your time as a coach? Uh, uh, it, it's a little bit of a strange answer, but when we made the transition, from Division Two to Division One, we knew it would be difficult, but I didn't understand how difficult. Uh, I had, so we, we had won over 80% of our games my first nine years at South Dakota State, and then we made the transition. We had no league, we we weren't eligible to play in the NCAA tournament for five years. It, it was a mess, and we had years where we won six games and eight games, and it just, we just slowly had to build. But I I, I would not trade anything for those years because that's when I really had to learn how to coach. I had the first nine years, I just had better players than everybody. And 
So, you know, we just ran them to death. There were less timeouts in Division II. There's a timeout at the 10-minute mark, and that was it. And so we, we just, we were deeper, and we ran them. And so I had to learn how to coach for the first time. And so as I look back on that, as difficult as it was, and it was very difficult for me, I, I question whether I wanted to be in coaching because winning is so important to me. But that, that's really what helped me uh, as we made that transition into Division I and just slowly started to build 6, 8, 13, 19, 25. Uh, learning how to coach uh, the right way and, and making sure. Now, don't get me wrong. Players are the most important thing. They just are. Uh, but coaching is important. Uh, and, and so I had to learn how to coach during that time. So I, as I look back and that, as painful as it was, it, it was the best thing for me. You know, you mentioned being able to learn to go through all these things. What's great about this fan base is not just their love for basketball. They absolutely love it. It's their knowledge of the game. These fans really know basketball here in Little Egypt. So for them to learn a little bit more about you, what type of style will you bring here to Banterra Center and style they can expect? <laughs> well, uh, I just promise you the first thing I already know, you're going to be screaming at me to call timeouts, okay? <laughs> uh -uh. I, I, I don't call timeouts when everybody else generally calls timeouts. Uh, normally, everybody kind of has a feel, oh, that's when they're going to call a timeout or we need a timeout. I, I generally don't do that. And so I've, I've had people after me for years, you know, when are you going to use all your timeouts? I like to save them. So that, that'll be the first thing that might frustrate you a little bit. But we, we, I would tell you this, we're, we're uh, offensively, uh, we, we, we play very freely. We, we run motion offense for the most part. It's, it's the, yeah. The, <laughs> Yeah, I tell you, this year at Wright State, we averaged 85 points a game. We we led. <laughs> we we led the country in field goal percentage, 53 percent. So it's not just run and gun and take whatever shot you want. I love big guys that want to be big guys, and and I. So I always say this, because every five wants to be a four, and every four wants to be a three, and. And so we want to recruit sixes that want to be fives. We, we, we like guys that want to catch the ball in there and get to the free throw line and are skilled and can finish around the basket. And so we, we try to build our offense from the inside out. So we score 85 points a game. We're one of the top teams in the country in points, points per possession. And that's really what we pay attention to, points per possession offensively, points per possession defensively. Uh, but I say that, and, and my main focus as, as I watch our team, as we practice, if you ever came to practice, all I think about is defense and rebounding. Those are the, those are the two most important things to me. Now, now this year, we were not a good defensive team, and it was a highly frustrating thing for me, very frustrating for me, and we were incredible offensively. Uh, but defense, particularly on the road, wins. And, and when you have tough shooting nights, defense wins. It can be consistent. Offense can't be. And so that, but, but so when we're in practice and we're working on defense, we're always working on offense because we run motion. And so if I'm focused on the defense, the other team is, is working our motion. So we're always working on our offense, even if I'm never watching it. Coach, I think it's one of those things where everybody that's in your seat may mention it, but one of the commonality things of anyone who's reached out to me over the last 24 hours since we've announced you from a lot of coaching friends is Coach Negi is one of the best dudes there is because he truly has faith and family part of his program. For those that maybe haven't followed your background a ton, why is faith and family really intertwined within your program as much as it is every day you've been a part of it? Well, I mean, uh, I'll give you an example. When, when, when we were going through the losing process, uh, at South Dakota State, and, and be, because I, I want to be identified as a winner. That's like important to me, but is that the most important thing to me? And I remember, I mean, this is kind of a strange story, but I rem remember sitting in church w one, one morning, remember where I was sitting, and, and I heard God say, do you want to win or do you want to know me? And, and it, it blew me away because I thought for the first time, you're right, I, all I care about is winning over everything else. And, and so, you know, I, I had to change some of my priorities. Uh, and, you know, I'm so thankful to my wife. Uh, I mean, she's incredible. She's incredible. And she is definitely the best, best part of me. Uh, you know, like I say, these past three days have been incredibly emotional. But I think this is going to be good for her because she's not going to necessarily be there all the time for our kids and the grandkids. And, and so they'll have, it'll stretch them, too. 
but but uh, you know we when we moved to Dayton there were seven of us Jamie and me and, and, and our five kids there's now 13 of us and uh, uh, you know it's so Dayton is, has been so good to us and we love our kids we're still gonna get to see them it's not like we're we're leaving the earth we're, we're just we're just moving away and uh, but they're you know as hard as it is for them they're happy for us too and I'm just so very thankful for, for my family uh, my dad was just such a big influence in my life he, he passed away a couple years ago uh, but but he was probably the most influential man in terms of, of basketball and and just you know the, the toughness that it takes to really get through life uh, you know my dad was just such a big influence on me and and uh, so you know it, it and it'll it, it will stay that way I mean I, I have to keep it in order if I get it out of order then I start worrying about me and when I start worrying about me I'm not a very good coach when I'm more when I when I'm when I'm concerned about our players and they're my focus I, I'm a pretty good coach when I get worried about Scott Nagy I'm not a very good coach one of the areas that is always a great game that you do and it's a cause because I know it's close to your family but each year as you coach there's always one game a year where you do a Samaritan game where you coach without shoes now, a lot of that has to do with your adopted daughter that you have, Naika, part of your family. Talk about the importance of that game, why you keep continuing it, and why it's just such an important cause for you and Jamie. Uh, yeah, it's a little odd to coach in your bare feet. I don't get to stomp as hard. And, and <laughs> <laughs> uh, But when, when we adopted Naika from Haiti, uh, she's 21 now. She was two and a half when she came to us. Uh, I, I wanted to figure out ways we could help Haiti because the, the country is a mess and we see today it's still an incredible mess it's even worse now but but I want to figure out ways we could help and, and so uh, I ran into a guy Ron Hunter who was at IUPUI at the time and Ron is at Tulane uh, now and uh, anyway he introduced me to a man that uh, Manny Ahome who runs Samaritan's Feet and what they do is they go all over the country all over the world and do shoe distributions. And in a shoe distribution, you sit down in front of somebody else, you wash their feet, you give them a brand new pair of socks and a brand new pair of shoes. And uh, so what we started doing is coaching barefoot to, to raise money for Samaritan's feet and shoes and whatever else we could do. And, and we wanted to make sure that stuff went to Haiti. And I, I've been doing it for, I don't know, a long time now, 15 years or so. We've taken two teams overseas. We took a, a team from South Dakota State to, to Haiti and uh, spent eight days there going around, no basketball, just, just serving the kids, serving kids in school. And, and you know, to, to sit down in front of somebody and wash their feet is a very humbling thing. But I, I tell you also, to have somebody wash to for you to sit and sit still and have somebody wash your feet and serve you is very humbling too uh but but just such I, I can tell you those two trips we took one with south dakota state and one with wright state we went to dominican republic are probably the best things i've ever done with a basketball team all the winning all the other stuff aside for those young men to learn how to serve other people because college basketball players it's it's very self-serving and every I mean you all know it. you all want to know how, how everybody walks up how you doing you know they want to be around them when they're done playing nobody's gonna care like they care about them now and so one of my goals with our players is to, is to make sure they understand that and teach them how to initiate how to serve uh, you know my staff we want to serve our players like we, we don't want to be the Lord over them we want to be servants to them and and uh, you know we want to teach them how to serve because basketball is going to end for all of them someday, and, and what they have going on after that is going to be way more important. Coach Nagy, absolutely. <laughs> the job you have now has changed a bit since when you first got into it. Of course, the ever-changing landscape that we I talk about with Tim and Chancellor Lane all the time feels like it changes by the day uh, and sometimes even by the hour. Um, of course, with the transfer portal, NIL, all of those factors, which we'll have more information coming out, I know, over the next couple of weeks. But for you, as you navigate these waters, what's most important for you in this seat to navigate all those different challenges that come your way that, of course, have changed throughout your, your coaching tenure? Well, I'll tell you this. If you're interested in NIL, come talk to us because <laughs> it, it, it's, uh, it, it's changed a lot. And, and, you know, I could say I don't really like it. I don't think it's necessarily good for the players. Uh, so many of them aren't establishing roots, places. Yeah, you know, I loved it when we had senior days where, where the fans and the players had a connection and there were roots. 
and you know we we built into the players and they built into us and it has become much more difficult to do that it's less relational now it's much more transactional now i can i can fight that and be an old curmudgeon and say i don't like it but if i do that we're going to get whipped because it's going to be hard to get players uh it's the, the nil is very important it, it it just is and there are very average players that are getting in a portal that you can't believe the amount of money they're getting. And, and all the players know it, and it, it has become the thing to do. You, you, I mean, you just watched Marcus Damask last night, uh, and, and you know, you, you would like to see him finish here, but you also can understand, you know, that amount of money, why a young man would go. And, and so, like, it's hard to fault them for that. It, it, it's a very difficult thing. I still want it to be relational. I want guys to be loyal, and, but, but then a player could say, well, coach, you said to be loyal, and here you are changing schools. And so th they know that too. Uh, and, and so, you know, it's, it, it's a difficult subject, but, you know, the way we still want to build this and the way NIL was really meant to be was that it was meant to help you keep the players that you have there and not go out and try to recruit players by paying them a bunch of money. And so that's the way we'll want to build it is to recruit good high school players, develop them in our system, and do the very best we can to keep them. If we'll be able to, I don't know. And if, if they're so good that schools like Illinois want them, then we're doing a pretty good job too. And, and so that'll help us recruit the next, next young man. And so it's a, it has changed in the past two or three years, and, and, and you have to adapt or you're just going to get run over. My last question to you is your next week's pretty pretty dry, right? Not a lot going on. <laughs> yeah. And it, you know, with with Easter being this weekend, it's it's hard to get much done between now and, and Monday, but but uh, we'll meet with the team here as quickly as we can, figure out, you know, who uh, I, mean, I mean several of them are in the portal, figure out who wants to come back, who's going. I think with with, with not having a coach, it's just, it's just even more so that it's kind of the thing to do for everybody, get in the portal, see what kind of interest there is. But there still may be some of those guys that want to come back here. And so we, we've got to convince them of that. Uh, you know, we've got to give them some time to figure that out because their world's been turned upside down too by losing their coach and somebody they trust in. And so we have to earn that trust, and it's, it's hard to do in a short period of time. And, and so we're, we'll work our best to do that. I have to put a staff together, uh, working very hard at that. That's probably going to be the most important thing. I need to get them on board as quickly as possible so we get going and I'm not spending all my time hiring instead of recruiting. Well, after today, we'll let you get to work. Maybe, maybe in a couple hours, we'll let them get to work. Coach Neggett, congratulations. Welcome to Carbondale. Thank you. <laughs> Let's give a round of applause our new head coach, Coach Neggy. Saluki fans who are watching, we appreciate you watching wherever you are. For our fans here in attendance, be sure to stay attention to all of our social channels, siusalukis.com, for more information in the coming days on how you can support Coach Negi in Saluki basketball. For Coach Tim and Chancellor Lane, thank you all for coming, Saluki Nation, and go dogs! Go on.